These are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, and thank you to everyone for joining our marketing discussion on lead generation and website traffic. This is something that we marketers will always have to hurdle, so we're happy that we can share our successes and our tips with you today, and we hope you'll share your ideas as well. This is not meant to be your traditional webinar so much as it is an open discussion amongst marketers. If you have comments, we hope you'll chime in. Um, you can do so via the uh, questions and chat box on the side of your GoToWebinar. Um, you know, if you had a similar experience or you had a different experience, tell us about it. We want this to be a space for sharing knowledge and helping one another succeed. So what we'll do is um, we're going to record this session. We'll send it to you after for your reference. Uh, again, if you have any questions or comments throughout the presentation, we very much encourage you to type them into that chat box. Sorry to keep you on mute, but um, you know if we take it off mute, it's a little bit more chaotic and hard to hear. So uh, we thank you for, for bearing with us with that aspect of it. So um, we'd like to get started, and I'm going to begin by introducing our host for today. All right. Great. Thanks, Janine. I'm Cassie Nelson, and I am the Marketing Communications Manager at Sales Fusion. Um, Sales Fusion is a marketing automation platform that provides a complete and easy-to-use marketing automation solution with the functionality needed to engage in long-term relationships that generate revenue. But we also recognize that marketing success depends not just on technology, but also on expertise, processes, and people, so we have a team of marketing experts that collaborate with our customers. And I am your other host. I am Deneen. I'm the marketing manager for Technology Advisors. Um, Technology Advisors is a company that connects businesses to software tools that make their sales or marketing, their service easier, um, more efficient. Those types of software products include CRM, marketing automation like Sales Fusion. Um, we have business intelligence tools, CPQ, and the list goes on. Um, but we're more than just a reseller. We also have certified CRM training staff, we offer technical support for the software we sell, and we build customized CRM programs for, work for our clients. So we're kind of your full service software advisor. Uh, if you're looking at, at something, you don't know if a tool is right for you, we kind of consult you on it and help you decide if uh, it's going to be useful for you, and then we get you up and running on it. So we're, our agenda for today, um, we're going to look at some trends that we're seeing. And then we're going to talk about, in relation to those uh, trends, what's, what's worked for technology advisors and what's worked for sales fusion, and how can you make those things work for you. And then if you have any comments or want to throw anything out there, we hope you'll share what's working for you. So here's some of the marketing trends that we're seeing. Um, you know, Google has changed its uh, SEO rankings to really put an emphasis on video content. Um, ideally, they'd like to see video content on every single page that you have. Obviously, that's not always easy to do. Um, so to get those rankings up, you definitely need more video content. Um, access to educational content outweighs the traditional marketing tactics. So back in the day, you're kind of just shouting at people. and uh, hoping that you can reach them in, in that way, but now people are doing their own research. And so the more educational content that you can bring these people, um, the more that they establish that trust with your brand and they want to connect with you. Um, mobile obviously continues to grow in importance. Oversaturation of the market with the internet and with people's accessibility to all the information that makes it much more difficult to reach the prospects that you want to reach, so you have to get creative, and that's kind of what we're going to dive into today. And then creating that integrated multi-touch approach is a huge key. Great. So, Deneen, I think we're starting with video marketing, and there's a crazy stat out there that says it's actually predicted that video will account for 69% of all internet traffic by 2017. So, you know, obviously, video marketing is a trend, and it's one that we simply cannot ignore. So, um, you know, I think I'll pass it back over to you to see what's worked for technology advisors in regard to video. So, as I was saying earlier, uh, 
it can be difficult to come up with all the video content that you want to do. And so some ideas that we have for you are, first of all, micro webinars, which is something that we started doing. We're all super busy. Not everyone can commit a full hour to an event. Thank you for committing an hour today. We appreciate that. Um, so if you do a micro webinar that's focused on a very um, specific pain point to your demographic, you are bringing them that valuable content in a short amount of time. And then you can even take that video content and repurpose it for other things. So you can stream those together, you can post them on your website, and that's helping you to generate that video content that you want to see. Um, the other thing that's really cool is this tool that we found called Sparkle um, Video Scribe. And you've probably seen uh, a couple of commercials here and there that feature this style. Um, I want to play this for you, but for some reason it's not letting me. Essentially, it's the uh, hand drawing type of uh, video style. And I can tell you I'm not an extremely tech savvy person. And first of all, it's free. You can, you can buy it, but uh, we use a free version for being able to do informational videos. And you don't need to be a tech genius to figure it out. I downloaded it, played around with it for a little bit, and was able to figure out how all the functionality works within it. So um, if this would play, which I don't think it will, um, I'll, I'll maybe come back at the end and show you guys a little bit of this. Uh, it's pretty cool, and we've definitely utilized it. So you know, if you're working on a small budget, or you, you know, simply don't have the time to film a live action type video, this is a really fun tool um, that's, that we've really enjoyed using. And what about you guys, Kathy? Yeah, well, Sparkle is new to me, so I might need to go test that out later. But um, for us, you know, we've definitely seen that uh, video marketing has become increasingly more effective. Um, and at Sales Fusion, we've developed a monthly webinar series titled The Insightful Marketer. And the series is really just an educational event targeting uh, marketing professionals who are hungry to stay up to date with the ever-evolving trends and hot topics in the world of B2B marketing. And since the series started in August of 2015, we've seen an over a 600% increase in attendance and registrations. And, um, but really, outside of that, which you know is obviously great, what's even better is that once we leave every event with a great video asset that we can repurpose across website and campaigns, and we also gate our webinar replays, which help with lead generation. So you know, I know you mentioned the micro webinars that you guys do. You know, webinars really are just a, a great tool that you know you get that video asset on the back end without having to do much production work. Um, we also do have uh, a video series that we branded Marketing Minutes and then a new one called Marketing Quick Tips. Um, there are a couple screenshots here of um, the start of a, a couple of our videos that we have. But you know, we don't have a really large team and massive budget here at Sales Fusion, but um, you really don't need that or even an experienced video or graphic designer to, to create quick tip videos. Um, even if you don't have like a high-grade camera, just grab your smartphone and record as little as 10 to 15 seconds of a snackable tip that you can add to your website. And you know, we don't even gate these video series, but we still see great success with lead generation and brand exposure and SEO. And you know, our Marketing Minute series is even picked up by Marketing Profs as a recurring guest video series, which really gives us a ton more exposure than we would have had, um, obviously, without without this video series. And I'm a firm believer that the work that you put in to create a simple video will definitely pay off in the long haul. So, you know, again, even if you just you don't have the large team or the budget, um, get creative. Pick up a smartphone. With the technology available today, as far as smartphones are concerned, you you really don't need um, the equipment or the team or the budget to put together some some videos that will probably show you some success. I think it's a really good point too, Cassie, with being able to do a 10 or 15 second video with just a little quick tip. You know, that's something that people can real fast look at it, get the information, move on with their day, and I think people appreciate that now 
more than ever, because they're moving so fast with everything, they just want that information. They won't have to dig through to find the information they're looking for. So that's a really great idea. Great. Um, content generation. This is always a hot topic um, and, you know, is definitely something that I think we all know is important and effective. Um, and here there's a stat that content marketing leaders experience 7.8 times more site traffic than non-leaders. Um, and I know we're all looking to increase web traffic and lead gen, so uh, do you have any tips or tricks for us on this one, Denise? I do, and actually my first one I can thank you guys for because uh, on one of our webinars you introduced me to the Snipply tool, and this thing is so cool. Um, you know, earlier I had, we have a, a sister company, and it's we don't always have the time to generate the content uh, or the, the resources to generate the content that we would like, and so what this tool does is enable us to share on social media things that are important to our followers but still have that little bit of a reminder about our brand on the page and that is huge for us and not only that but I like that the tool lets you see how many people actually clicked on it for each time that you create a new snip as they call it um, that is extremely beneficial to know is is this resonating with the people who are reading these articles that I'm posting so if you don't have the availability to produce the assets that you want to produce you can still get your brand in front of people and on social media on your posts and that sort of thing by by using a tool like this again it's also free and I believe they they have a paid version as well but um, you know you can get fancier with how it looks and that sort of thing but for the free version, I think it looks really nice and uh, it, it's very effective. Um, the other thing that you'll see here is bullet points and you're probably wondering what the heck does that mean. So uh, in generating content, usually you will have uh, a team of people who have uh, various skills and you want to, let's say, write a blog post. So maybe you have an idea and you're not the expert on it, but somebody else at your company is an expert on it and they're just super busy. Ask them, and I've done this before and I've found great success with it. You know, I'm surrounded by a bunch of very tech savvy guys and gals who know a lot more about certain topics than I do. And I want to write about these topics, but without the background on it, and without the time to do the deep research and understand all the complexities, it makes it difficult. So I ask these experts, I say, can you bullet point five aspects of this topic that you think are really important for me to hit on that, you know, are resonating with your clients and your markets? And then I will take that and I will expand that into a blog article. And the reason that this works is because you're not asking them to devote a lot of time. And they appreciate that, especially the salespeople. And it's also saving you time because now you're working together, you have the insights, you can push that out faster. And that same type of idea comes in with my next point, which is guest blogging. Um, you know, you, you have partners who have these expertises that maybe you don't have. And they can also bring this fresh new perspective to your audience. So when you ask them to write a blog for you on a topic relevant to your audience and you share that through your social media and your email campaigns, you are bringing a new audience to them and they are bringing a new audience to you in exchange when they write one for you. So it's it's a free and simple way to expand the reach of your visibility online. Um, what about you, Cassie? What are you guys doing? Um, we do a number of things and you know, I will say that I the bullet points am going to walk out of this room and assign, ask quite a few people <laughs> to do that because we, I have, you know, begged and pleaded to get some experts to, um, within, in-house to write some blogs and, you know, everyone's so busy, it's just difficult to get the, the time and a lot of people who are more technical say they aren't, you know, writers, so I think the bullet points is definitely a trick that I will be deploying immediately. Um, <laughs> But for us on the other side of things, you know, ask, once the content is created, um, 
it, it's so difficult and time consuming to, to really work up a good piece of content. So the very worst thing that you can do once you've actually produced something awesome is to not optimize the engagement that it should garner. Um, so I'm going to touch on kind of the other side of thing once that content has been generated. Um, and at Sales Fusion, we have a couple tools that we use to help us with this. Um, one of which, which is really affordable, is Optin Monster. Um, and it, it helps us to capture leads who look like they might be leaving our website. So once you actually get people on your site, you know, the conversion rate is, it, it's difficult to get that up. But with Optin Monster, you can design your um, really pop-up to however you'd like it. So for us, we have some most fresh and relevant assets that we've created um, appear, really just pop up once a visitor is navigating towards the right corner of the screen where it looks like they might be exiting. And this has helped us experience about a 20% increase in opt-ins. And it really, again, is a fairly inexpensive tool that's uh, really helped us to get our content in front of people before um, you know, they leave our site. And then another great one, but it is a more expensive option, is Bright Info. And this is a really cool technology that will actually crawl your site and serve up relevant content to website visitors based on the pages or the assets that they're already visiting. So, you know, as everyone in marketing knows, personalization is so important. Um, so having a tool that can actually provide content that's most relevant to, to what a visitor is interested in or where they are in their buyer's journey is, is really huge. And, you know, again, just having these small, these are, Bright Info has smaller pop-ups that will just come towards the bottom of the page or the top of the page, really you can customize it. Um, so they're not too in your face, but they're, you know, just serving up relevant content that will really increase your time on site and also your conversion. So. You know, I think our biggest trick and what's worked for us is just making sure once that content is developed um, that it's getting in front of people and that, you know, you didn't waste your time developing, you know, spending a lot of time and effort developing something that isn't even going to be seen. And it's not, you know, because the content's not good, it's just because you're not, you know, serving it up in the best way possible. So that would be my biggest trick. That um, opt-in monster is really interesting. So to differentiate that from the Snipply that we showed earlier, so Snipply is when someone's on another website and you want to put your content in front of them, but yeah. this is when they're on your website and then they're, you're pulling content from another area of your website. So exactly. it's like you're, it's layering your website on top of your website, if you will. Exactly. So the, yeah, those first two images are of existing opt-in monsters on our site where, you know, if someone's getting ready to leave, we're saying, hey, check out this marketing automation blue book that just has really the val what the value of marketing automation is. And um, because, you know, a lot of people will, will leave the site before they're, they even know if, if marketing automation is right for them. Um, and then we also have a different one on our pricing page specifically that just asks, are you, pay are you using marketing automation and you're paying too much for it? Um, you know, submit, submit this form and, and we'll, we'll get back to you with some offers. So really just exactly laying our own, layering our own website on top of itself and um, help to help with that personalization and also just help with that last ditch effort of are you sure you want to leave? Like there, there's some good information here. Very cool. I like that. All right, perfect. So mobile first, another um, big one. So more than 50% of emails are open on a mobile device and I know that this is one of many, many stats out there um, in regards to how important mobile first is and uh, how you know relevant really smartphones are. Four out of five people in the United States have a smartphone. Um, so it's definitely mobile first is a, is a trend that's not going away. For sure. Um, you know, part of what goes along with that is optimizing for that. So I'm sure a lot of us savvy marketers are doing a lot of things, but you know, um, one thing that you may not always think about are your web forms. So are your web forms more than 600 pixels wide? Because if they are, that's probably not good for mobile. Um, most email opens I see are done through mobile. So I know that by when I look at my marketing automation stats, I need to go in my campaigns, I need to optimize everything for that platform so that when they view it in mobile, it looks fabulous. 
Um, one thing you can do to make things more mobile friendly, um, which I'm sure some of you have done, but I just want to reiterate it, switching from hyperlinks to buttons on as much content as you can. Buttons are bigger, buttons are easier to tap on a small screen, and if you're sending an email, and what I like to do is I kind of like to mix both. Um, give them the option, but most of the time I see them clicking on the button. Um, so, you know, people appreciate the fact that they can click on that with a lot more ease than having to zoom in on their iPhone, you know, 50 times to try and get to the content that they want to see. Um, on the next slide, I will show you another tool that we recently started using called SEM Rush, and that helps you, oh, did I pull that out? I think I pulled that out. Uh, actually, let's talk about what's working for you, Cassie. Okay, what perfect. have you guys done? Um, well, so I'm I'm confident that everyone on the line knows how important mobile responsive is when it comes to email. Um, with over half of emails first being open on more mobile, it's absolutely imperative that you design your displays perfectly across smartphones, tablets, um, in addition to desktop. And at Sales Fusion, I will say we do have it pretty easy here because our own platform, Sales Fusion, has a drag and drop builder that automatically creates a responsive design. Um, but of course, it's important to, even with that technology in place, to test your emails no matter what platform you're using. And unfortunately, it gets even trickier for, for marketers when it comes to email because it's not only mobile responsiveness that we have to worry about when it comes to our emails displaying correctly, but it's also important to look at how your emails display across the various email clients like Outlook, Gmail, Yahoo, et cetera, um, in both desktop and mobile. So, you know, again, Sales Fusion has a bit easier on this front as well because we have a built-in tool that, that helps um, with testing to make sure that it looks good across all clients. But um, again, whatever you're using for bulk sends, it's just so important to remember to test look at the mobile responsiveness, look at the email client displays and the mobile across each of those email clients. Um, and then also to reiterate, Deneen, what you were saying um, about web forms. It's, it's really important and a lot of people forget that, um, you know, a lot of times your emails that are being opened have a call to action in them. So what is your call to action linking to? And if you're going to a landing page or a form or um, really, whatever the content is, make sure that that's mobile responsive too. Um, if you link to a landing page that's not mobile optimized, you're pretty much decreasing your conversion rates by over half straight out of the gate. Um, you know, we've, I, I actually was at a conference yesterday and everyone there across multiple industries, and I, I think everyone on the phone has experience with this too. If you receive an email um, and you're, you open it no matter what you're on, desktop, mobile, I don't care if, it, if you open it and it doesn't look right, then you're not even going to take the time to read the first word in it. If you if it all looks mumbled, jumbled, um, you know, images aren't clear or are you know off centered, it's just it's you're you're busy. You have so many emails hitting your inbox. You're just going to automatically delete that. So um, you're really doing your dis yourself a disservice by uh, may, by not having both your emails, your CTAs, just every really all content now needs to be optimized mobily and. You know, at the end of the day, my biggest tip for this would be just to test, test, test. Just make sure before you send anything out in bulk or even just, you know, in small batches um, that it looks correct across any and all platforms and uh, hardware devices. And just to, to add to what you're saying, Cassie, about testing it on different, how it looks on different email uh, servers. I, that is something that we have definitely seen and definitely struggled with as well because I have to say, Gmail does a really nice job for the most part. Uh, most of the emails that we'll create, I know if I test in Gmail, it's going to look great. Outlook can be a problem. Yeah. And a lot of our clients have Outlook. So knowing that going in and trying to optimize it for their Outlook inboxes um, has definitely been a challenge, but we wouldn't have known that if we weren't looking at that that testing style. So, exactly. you know, like you're saying, they may have in the past or with other emails that they're receiving just disregard those because they look so out of place and, you know, unprofessional. So you mm -hmm. don't want to do that to yourself. You're losing a very valuable resource. 
For sure. And it's, you know, it's interesting because it sounds like such a simple and obvious tip, but it's, you know, when you have a million things going on in a day, um, it's so many people just, you know, set up their email, send themselves a test, check it on their desktop and their Gmail, and then shoot it out. And, you know, it's just so important to take the time and, and really look at it. I 100% agree. Perfect. So oversaturation in the market. Uh, definitely something that probably the majority of us deal with. So um, this was, I, I thought, a pretty clever quote. Just um, think quality, not quantity, and build the kind of links that clearly differentiate you from your competition. Very simple, um, but you know, a lot of the times we all just try to throw out a bunch of content and links to um, put as many out there as possible, but think quality, not quantity. So, uh, Deneen, what, what has worked for you guys as far as breaking through the noise in the market? Well, this is where my SEM rush info came in. So I knew it was in here somewhere. Um, so it's $65 a month at the lowest price. Um, and it's actually pretty cool. We just started using it. What this does is it, it lets you type in your competitors' websites and see how they're ranked compared to you on an organic search. So it shows you what pages you need to improve. And then it gives you tips and suggestions for, okay, here's pages where you need better meta tags. Here's some suggestions for those meta tags. Here's um, you know, some SEO ideas, um, and here's how to do that. Um, it can do a site audit where it shows you, uh, unfortunately, recently, one of our, um, our sister companies had their website hacked, and it was just like a complete disaster. And so when they came back and used this SEM Rush tool, they saw, okay, well, we, we got the website back up, and we fixed all these things about it, but there are still all these errors happening. And so they can go through and check off one by one each of these errors and warnings for you know bad links, bad code, um, bad meta descriptions, and they can go through and optimize that. It even helps you choose AdWords um, based on trends that it's seeing with your competitors. So um, we're using this right now. We're starting to optimize our SEO with it. Um, we're seeing just some amazing results from it and you know the fact that we can just monitor this on such a detailed level is is really cool um, so you know it's a great idea to try to impact how your pages are faring com competitively and um, yeah we're, we're enjoying it. it I don't think there's again just like some of the other tools we talked about, there are higher levels of this, but the $65 uh, a month, totally worth it in my mind. Um, we're really enjoying it. And then I also had a suggestion, um, a citation. So I'm mentioning citation ranking, and then I will send you guys this hyperlink in the follow-up email. Um, a citation is a mention of your business name with another piece of business information, such as your phone number, your address, website, combination of the three. So citations are thought to be important for ranking in Google's local search results. So the more citations you have from quality sources, the better your business is likely to rank. So what that's saying is submitting your business to sites on this page is likely to improve your rankings. So we found um, this website, Moz, compiled a list of these citation websites for specific industries. So you can go through and add your business to any UC listed that you are on. It seems random, but it makes sense. The more paths you create for people to find you online, the better you're going to do. That's awesome. <clears throat> I know, Brad. Um, like, what? Sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I know for us, you know, breaking through the noise, uh, especially in our market, is is really difficult, um, and SEO is is obviously huge and important. And there are so many things that go into it, and it's you know sometimes we just call it black magic here because it's you know <laughs> is there really a, a, a algorithm that works that we could improve our SEO continuously? Um, so that it's cool to see some of these tools that could help with that. Yeah, I mean the thing is that Google is changing their SEO standards every single day. So yeah. trying to keep up with that, that's a full-time job in itself. And so, yeah. you know, these are little things you can do, some of them free or inexpensive, 
that you can help yourself to, you know, optimize a lot of these things and kind of let let it work for you. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, so let's for talk us, about what you guys have seen. Yeah, for us, another um, and you know, again, SEO is like vitally important to this, but um, I could talk for days about how I really try to understand it, but don't don't fully. Um, so there's you know another tactic that we've used outside of SEO um, and really have started to find success with is social media, and just making sure that you have a presence wherever your audience already is really helps to keep your brand top of mind and to really break through that noise. Um, so this is really where we started with our social efforts. We, we looked to see where our target audience already has the largest presence, and we started building our social presence on the platforms that were most relevant to us. Um, you know, on the next slide, we'll go into our strategy in regards to the voice of our social presence. Um, we talked a few times earlier uh, in this discussion about how important content, specifically thought leadership content, is to a marketing strategy. And really this bleeds into social very much so. We find that having a good mix of our original sales fusion content that we've developed in-house as, as well as third-party content helps not only with a, asserting ourselves as thought leaders in the industry, but it also puts us in front of the, in, an audience that we might not have had access to otherwise. So, you know, sharing some, some analyst information or just really any third-party thought industry leaders, um, when, when we share their stuff via social and we tag them or, you know, our, tweet at them, we show up in front of, of their audience, and an audience that is, you know, likely larger than ours and also filled with people that might not even know that we exist. Um, so that's been a, a great way to kind of assert ourselves in the market. Um, we have an integration here with a B2B um, social sharing platform called Octopost that um, also helps, helps in these efforts as far as curating content, just publishing posts, um, looking to see really what, what the conversations are going on and, and making sure that we assert ourselves in there and really looping that back up into um, the full buyer's journey and, and with tracking and, and metrics and really being able to, to prove uh, the ROI of our social efforts. And uh, we really just have found that this is a good way to um, break through some of the noise in a, a really oversaturated market um, outside of the traditional SEO um, that, you know, really organically helps to grow your name. I think that also ties back into the idea of blog sharing and curating that content for one another. You're talking about, you know, reaching a market that maybe doesn't even have any idea who you are. And that's such a cool concept that you can talk to these people through another website or if you're sharing this curated content, putting that snippily on top of it, yeah, you're sharing their content and you're, you're still bringing in that, that second market, but you're, you're layering it still with a little piece of you. And so you're, you're tying it all together in that way. Absolutely. Perfect. I think, um, I believe this is our last trend, but taking an integrated approach. Um, this is a, a stat from Demand Metrics saying that 80% of companies with highly integrated systems achieved revenue goals. Um, and for us, this is really imperative to uh, our overall strategy and just our day-to-day. -day. Um, so this is a, a, a little view of a campaign. So um, this wasn't a real campaign that we ran, ran but this is just really to show the multi-touch campaign and, and how it can work. Um, and it's imperative to bring it all together to really fully optimize your efforts. So you can't expect an email to ca campaign to be successful on its own. Just like, you know, really any marketing tactic by itself probably is not going to be very successful. Um, but by creating multi-touch campaigns and incorporating email and social and outbound calls and really even direct mail, uh, you know, we're, we're actually believers over here that we don't think direct mail is, is quite dead, as some say. But um, really incorporating various marketing tactics within one multi-touch campaign, uh, I, you, you, I can ensure, uh, really assure that you will see more success with that. 
Um, and to layer onto that, at Sales Fusion, we have integrated systems that we really rely on to ensure multi-touch campaigns are a success. Um, really, most importantly, and the foundation of it all would be integrating your marketing automation with a CRM. That really helps to smooth the handoff from marketing emails to sales calls, back over to marketing efforts, whatever those may be. Um, but really just having the tools and systems in place um, to make sure that you have a fully integrated marketing campaign um, really is a trend that's going to continue. I mean, that's why when you look at that crazy chart of all the MarTech solutions out there, it's just growing crazy year over year because, you know, having the technology in place is is more and more important to to all marketers out there because it really is not no longer uh, you can just send an, a bulk email to people and expect um, results. You really have to have that multi-touch, fully integrated um, campaign in order to see success. I gotta back you up a hundred percent on the integrating idea because um, you know I can tell you from my own experience at my uh, where I used to work uh, was a publishing company, and they were very old school. So I didn't have a lot of online tools at my disposal. Um, we used this extremely outdated email server to send out these bulk emails, and it was horrible. And so when I started at Technology Advisors, and we were using marketing automation, um, you know, marketing automation, first of all, was just awesome to me because there's so many more things you can do with it than what we had, what I had been using at my old job. But, um, you know, I didn't, I was downloading lists from our CRM and then uploading it into our marketing automation because that's what I was used to doing. And in doing that, I was really doing myself a disservice because what I learned later was that if you integrate the marketing automation and CRM, First of all, you're saving yourself a lot of time because you can just segment those lists right from inside the marketing automation. And those lists are constantly updated. So instead of me having to re return to that CRM every single time, download a new list, pull out all the people who opted out, do whatever I want to do, and then re-upload it, it's doing the work for me. So mm -hmm. I create that list one time, and I know that list is accurate. And that is in itself a humongous time saver for me. Oh, yeah. Um, so. I, I'm 100% backing you on the on the integrating your CRM and marketing automation. Huge, huge, huge. It is. I don't know how, you know, now that that's just kind of the way that we work, I don't know how I could go back to anything else. Yeah, same. <laughs> Perfect. Well, you know, Denny, I think that it's been a really great discussion today. And I really, as, as you did at the beginning of this, I really encourage everyone on the line to um, submit any questions or any stories that they have as far as what's worked well or what hasn't worked so well for them um, throughout this past year in their marketing efforts. Um, and you know, we're, I know that you're always open to, to it, Danine, as well as we are here at Sales Fusion, um, opening up conversations, really just sharing tips and tricks and, and seeing how we might be able to help, um, help with your efforts going into 2017. So, um, if anybody wants to use, uh, you know, of course, visit our website um, or just email us directly to ask those questions or share those stories or just have a, a conversation offline. Um, I, I'd love to hear from you. And if you email marketing at techadb.com, you're emailing me, just so you know, FYI. Um, sure. It's not some random person. It'll be me. Um, but one last thing that I just want to do here is I would love to show you real quick, um, since I wasn't able to during the presentation, what that sparkle looks like. Oh, great. Yeah, I would love to see it. Let me show you an example. Okay, so here's the page on our website where we have our marketing solutions video. I'll just, I'll make this bigger. So, you know, it gives you all these options. You can use a hand and you can pick different people you want to draw. You type in your text and all this stuff. And it's actually really fun to use, so I didn't mind making these videos when I had to make them. Um, but again, it's free. It looks pretty cute in my opinion. And, <laughs> and it's getting... You can do voiceovers too. We did it just with music, but um, you know there is an option to upload your your voice content onto here as well. So I thought this was pretty cool. I definitely recommend checking it out. 
Yeah, I'm so impressed. That's that's awesome. Okay, and actually we have a question I'm trying to open here. Okay, so the question is we changed we changed our CRM and are using Infor and are wondering how to integrate SIC and NICS codes in there from Goldmine. Any ideas? Hmm. Let's see. I need my I need my tech uh, my CRM genius girl on here because she is she would know the answer to this question. Um, you know what? Can I let me talk to her after this presentation and I will email you directly about the answer to your question. I think she'll have some insights on that. Unless Cassie, do you have anything that you can add about this question? I don't. I think we'll have to take that one offline. Yep, I'll get back to you right after this on the answer to that question. All right, well, um, thank you everyone for joining us today. Cassie, it's been wonderful chatting yeah. with you. It sounds like there's something wrong with my... I don't know if everyone can hear me okay, but... Um, we hope that you. this has been informational for you. And uh, again, we'll be sending you the recording of this. I'll send you the links that we talked about. And um, any questions that we did not answer at this time, I will get back to you when we're done. Thanks so much, Janine. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon.